Well, hello again. If you're already subscribed to my channel, and if you're not and you're new here, welcome. My name is Erica, and I make art videos to put on YouTube. I post a new video every Thursday, and today's video is another one of the Fruity Produce Girls. And this piece is titled Mouthwatering because that was the description that came to mind when I think of that particular fruit. So I'm starting off by getting a basic idea of what I want to do here. And, you know, I've watched a few videos and I've tried to do some research on YouTube videos and a lot of people suggest doing thumbnails of your art first to kind of get an idea of what you want to do. And I feel like I should definitely do that sometimes because I feel like I waste a lot of time trying to work out the pose. For instance, this piece was an extra two and a half to three hours longer to do than the sweet piece. I'll leave a link to that one if you want to watch it in the description below. But I think because of the partial body, it took longer. Even though when I look at the two pieces together, I feel like the pineapple piece should have taken longer. And I struggled with where I wanted to place my scrolling. And I think that I probably definitely could have saved myself some time had I kind of worked out those details before starting. Now in my background I'm kind of looking to do like a cut open flesh of the watermelon look and even though I know most of the time nowadays watermelons don't have seeds, for artistic reasons I wanted my watermelon to have seeds. Now I don't know if you've ever cut a watermelon open but depending on the direction depends on how the seeds look. So if you cut it so that the stems on one side and where the flower used to be is on the other side, sometimes I've gotten them with the flower still stuck on there. It's all dried out. And it's pretty cool looking. But um, anyway, you kind of get a circular pattern around. So I used a protractor just to kind of have a... Um, like a guideline to keep my seeds somewhat uniform. And did you know that seedless watermelons are not genetically modified? They are actually a hybrid that is a watermelon that's crossed with a watermelon with 22 chromosomes and a watermelon with 44 chromosomes. And apparently somehow that results in a sterile watermelon. <laughs> Science. And these produce immature white seeds. And they are perfectly safe to eat. Every once in a while, I worked in produce, and every once in a while, I'd get a watermelon that was full of black seeds. And I'd always say to whoever was there to hear me, someone forgot to tell this watermelon it's seedless. <laughs> or maybe it just ended up in the mix. Or maybe it's some Jurassic Park, life will find a way kind of thing. Who knows? But some people were really picky about that. Like, it says seedless on the sticker. Until it gets cut open, all you can do is go with what the sticker says. But they're actually supposed to be good for you. The seeds, anyway. And they will not grow in your belly. But you should chew them well for optimum nutrition. Apparently, they have high levels of magnesium, zinc, and protein. Okay, and now that I'm happy with the design, I'm going to go back in and trace over all of the chosen lines with a Copic 0.1 multiliner pen. And then I go ahead and I erase all of the pencil marks. And I started to do some shading, but then I decided I wanted to go ahead and get the watercolor part out of the way. So I went ahead and taped that down. And I am using Strathmore Tone Tan um, paper, and I think it's 140 pound paper, so it's good with the watercolor. I don't have problems with it, but keeping it taped down does help it, you know, warping too much. So I do do that. And um, I want to say that I think it's mixed media is actually the type of paper it is, so, you know, it, it, it works well with it. And I'm using the Kiritake watercolors for this. I used two separate greens to do the border, um, just to kind of give it that textured look. And I use 
I was going to use two reds to do the watermelon part, but I found that just the one, the rose matter from the Kuretake was pretty color and it laid down real well and it blended really well. So I went ahead and didn't use that other color. I just used the one and I used some of the Calero um, metallic watercolors as well to kind of give a little bit of a sheen on the inside, some of that metallic pop to it. And of course, I will go ahead and leave a link to all the products in case you do want to try any of them out. I'll put a link to all of them in the um, description down below. And then once I do get all of the watercolor done, I go ahead and I dry it really good with the um, blow dryer because that seems to help flatten it out too. If I let it dry, air dry, it kind of keeps a little bit of a warp in the paper. But if I use that blow dryer and the, I don't know if it's the heat or what, but it just kind of seems to make that paper nice and smooth. So I can go ahead and um, untape it and not have too many issues when I'm trying to do my outlines with the bumpiness in the paper. And I don't know how people <laughs> keep their paper in one spot and draw. I've noticed with a few people that I watch on YouTube they have their paper in one spot the whole time. And I don't know, maybe that's something you're taught in art school, like a discipline thing, because that's something I definitely lack. <laughs> I cannot keep my paper in one spot and work. I have to be able to move it around, it seems like. Maybe that should be like something I practice more. I don't know. And I use a mix of the Copic markers and the Prismacolor markers to do the coloring in her skin tones and in the um, scroll work and some of her clothing. But then I also do use some of that Kiritake in her shirt so that that white kind of pops out a little better. I like the way it, it kind of like falls on top of it but then it sinks into the paper so even though you're putting color over it you're still keeping your shading underneath it but it just gives it that little bit of an extra dimension to the shirt for some reason so I do go ahead and use that once I think that's the last time I use the um, watercolor though once it's up like that and then another little useless fact on watermelons did you know that we call it a fruit, but apparently it's actually a vegetable and it belongs to the cucurbit family? <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, but it's related to pumpkins, cucumbers, and squash. Watermelon is also a health food. It has only 40 calories per cup and it has more lycopene than any other fruit or vegetable. Which lycopene, I guess, is a powerful antioxidant which reduces inflammation and destroys free radicals. And it's also high in vitamin C and a good source of fiber. It is also the official fruit of Oklahoma, or vegetable. I guess it's a vegetable, so it's the official vegetable of Oklahoma. They also say that... Americans eat more watermelon by weight than any other fruit, and I don't know how they get that statistic. I, is, do they judge that by how many watermelons are sold, or do they judge? Are they going around asking people how many pounds of watermelon they eat when they eat the watermelon? Because I can tell you that when I worked in produce, we got a lot of watermelons in. Like we get these big bins of watermelons in. But we threw a lot of them away, too, because, it's, you know, sometimes they came in bad or they, they weren't, whatever reason, you know, there was a lot that were tossed. So is it just that we sell a lot of weight in watermelon or are people actually eating that much weight in watermelon? I'm just curious. Things like that. I just I just don't trust those kind of things. Who's who's making these statistics? <laughs> And here in the U.S., we are ranked fourth in the world for watermelon production. Top watermelon growing states include California, Arizona, Texas, Georgia, and right here where I am, Florida. And this is a great place to be when watermelons go into season in July 
because we do get some amazing local watermelons in July. And watermelon sweetness is measured by a Brix scale. And most watermelons are around 9 to 10, apparently. And the very sweet watermelons measure at about 11 to 12 on the Brix scale. And I forgot to mention that I did use the Speedball Black ink for the watermelons. Because, I mean, not the watermelons, for the watermelon seeds. Because they, um, when it dries, that Speedball Black, when it dries, it has kind of a satiny finish to it. So it almost looks like watermelon seeds sitting on top of the paper. And did you know that seedless watermelons were actually created over 50 years ago? And watermelons have been cultivated in Egypt for more than 5,000 years. Egyptians even had drawings of watermelons on the tombs, or on the walls of the tombs, and they left watermelon with the dead to nourish them as they journeyed through the underworld. And since watermelons are native to Africa, they need hot, sunny conditions to thrive. Some need up to 130 days of warm days to ripen, which isn't a problem here in Florida. <laughs> Most watermelons mature um, between 85 to 100 days. So, yeah, yeah, that's definitely not a problem. That must be why they do so good down here. And since watermelons are 92% water, early explorers sometimes carried watermelons instead of canteens, which is probably better. I mean, I can't imagine that it was really clean, like clean back then and what was going on inside of a canteen. Eating fresh fruit was probably better than drinking water out of an old canteen. I wonder if they have any statistics for how many people died from drinking out of canteens that got funky. <laughs> uh, anyway, the last little bit of useless knowledge that I will leave you with on watermelons is that they usually have red flesh, but some watermelons have white, yellow, orange, or even green flesh. I've had the ones with the yellow flesh, and I've heard that they are supposed to be sweeter than the red flesh, but to me, I really didn't see that big of a difference. Maybe I just didn't have the greatest yellow fleshed watermelon there was, but I thought they were just as, the red was just as good as the yellow. So, okay. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and a big thanks to all of my awesome subscribers. You guys rock. I appreciate you. And if you enjoy these types of videos and are new here, please do subscribe. I upload a new video every Thursday. And if you ring that bell, then YouTube will be kind enough to let you know I've put a new video up. I hope you all have a great morning, day, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. There you are. And thanks for listening to me ramble on about watermelons and watching me draw. Until I see you guys in the next video. I love you guys. Bye.